people so today we are going to see a look a new subject which is microprocessor 8085 so uh, see in microprocessor they are asking about two microprocessor mainly 8085 and 8086 although some topics of 8085 are there 8086 you do not need to study but okay uh, you can just study one microprocessor nicely completely and then the other you can study by relating it so first we are starting with microprocessor 8085 okay so in ugc net exams they are going to ask you questions generally one or two questions from this topic and very basic questions very from not they are not going in a, a lot of depth from this subject so if you just look at interrupts and flags and timing diagrams they are not asking they are just asking from interrupts flags maybe instruction sets if you just look at these topics carefully you are, you can get through okay and this is a very nice subject scoring subject so i would advise that you do not leave this subject prepare it carefully just go through the subject once and uh, since this is a very logical subject you do not need to remember a lot of things so this can be scoring this can give you the extra edge uh, so uh, just now right now we are going to look at the basic structure of the microprocessor how the microprocessor was designed what was the intention how the things were placed what were the problems faced that because of which we had to make some modifications uh, okay see microprocessor was basically made to ease the task ease some functions is some arithmetic functions logical function just simple functions of addition subtraction everything see you've already uh, you might have seen in digital electronics that we can design a adder we can design a subtractor but see how many gates how many logic circuits are you going to put on one pcb that see pcb okay if you have studied you might know there is a limitation to a pcb the number of gates the number of things that you can put on a pcb is limited you cannot overcrowd it so uh, maybe somebody got an idea that we can uh, make a circuit make a okay what do i say some ic such that it can perform a number of arithmetic and logical operations arithmetic operations of addition division etc sorry addition subtraction and logical op operations like and or xor so with this idea they designed a microprocessor now see what all we are going to put in the microprocessor this is vcc and ground these are uh, obviously they are given for the power supply we are going to give the power supply to the ic using this vcc and ground then we have put a clock okay in every sequential circuit in any circuit where synchronization is required where you have to interface two things we are going to interface memory with this circuit we are going to interface some input output devices so that their clock is necessary so we are putting a clock uh, okay 3 megahertz frequency clock we are going to use actually this is not a clock this is a counter we are using a counter to provide clock to this okay but for right now you can understand that we are giving the clock to this uh, ic see this is id id stands for instruction decoder instruction decoder what is the uh, purpose for this any instruction that you are going to give to this microprocessor your microprocessor there should be something inside it that decodes it that executes it that understands it basically the work of this block is to just see what instruction is given what do you want to say this is going to tell the microprocessor what work is to be done this is the control and timing unit this is just going to synchronize things when you are going to access the memory when the input output has to be accessed everything this is going to be done by control and timing this is the main part this is the alu alu is arithmetical logical unit this is going to perform all the arithmetic operations and logical operations this is going to have a number of adders subtractors and gates or gates okay all this is going to be here this is the carry bit okay see whenever you are performing any arithmetic operations we've already you might have already seen in digital electronics that whenever we are required to perform addition or subtraction one carry or borrow is required so this is going to do that work these are different registers okay i have drawn only three although this microprocessor 8085 is going to have a b c d e five registers and one hl pair also okay we are going to look at later the uh, for now you understand that these are different registers what is the work of these registers is they're going to hold some data they're going to uh, okay just just hold data whenever you want to perform operations between uh, data two different data suppose you can put one data in register b one data in register c and then just simply add and put the result in a something like that they are just holding the data 
this is the bus what is the bus doing is whenever you want to transfer data from memory to register register to memory you are going to put the data from the register to this bus this bus is going to transfer the data to the memory okay fine these are write and read lines okay they are active low active low means whenever you make write bar 0 or read bar 0 you are going to read or write from the memory when they are 1 memory is not being accessed these are the address lines address lines because see i have interfaced a memory this is a memory memory has been interfaced with the microprocessor so these are the address lines see uh, there has to be some locations in the memory address of the memory okay so you have the microprocessor will have to tell what memory location exactly has to be accessed what do what are you exactly looking for so we are going to place the address on these address line the, this uh, 8085 has 16 address lines and 8 data lines so what is going to happen is every location in the memory is going to have a 16 bit long address okay so 16 bit long address has to be put on these uh, address lines and uh, when you reach that particular address if you want to read data or write data this is going to be done with the help of data bus this is having one address bus and one data bus uh, okay but what happens practically is see we required one address bus of 16 bits 16 bits or 16 address lines and also we required one data bus one data bus of 8 bits or 8 address lines but see these were a total of 24 bits or 24 lines but whenever you are going to increase a pin in the IC you are going to need a padding IC padding of course for insulation which is costly so as you increase number of lines number of bits number of pins in the IC you are increasing the cost of the IC to cut the cost to make this IC cost effective what we do is we are doing uh, we are using a concept known as multiplexing multiplexing of pins pin multiplexing what we do is see these eight uh, okay one important concept that you need to understand is whenever you are giving the data you are not extracting when you are I'm sorry whenever you are giving the address you are not extracting data and whenever you are giving the extracting the data you do not require to give the address so using this concept what we have done is a15 to a8 that is the upper bits higher bits are only used as address lines these comprise of only the address bus only the address bus and the lower 8 bits these have been multiplexed okay the, this is going to behave as data bus as well as address bus multiplexed okay so what what we have done using this way is we have saved eight pins we have saved eight lines whenever we are going to give the address whenever we need to give the address we are going to place the upper eight bits in these lines lower eight bits in these lines and when we reach the location then what we are going to do is we are going to use this as a data bus for doing this thing for doing this uh, work we are using a special signal known as ALE ALE stands for address latch enable address latch enable okay what does this address latch enable do this does what it name says exactly it just enables a latch okay latch uh, means it is going to lock this bus for using as address only whenever whenever this ALE is going to be one this bus this bus is going to be used as an address bus and whenever this ALE is zero this bus is going to be used as a data bus okay so using this ALE ALE is basically a flip-flop flip-flop uh, when whenever flip-flop is one it allows changing data whenever flip-flop is zero is going to be used as data bus okay so using this ALE we are doing pin multiplexing okay till then uh, we can just look at the working uh, just look at the working basic working of this microprocessor okay you might not understand the instructions right now you uh, may not be able to get but just listen suppose we have got an instruction mvia 23h and this instruction was stored at memory location 2000 
okay see every instruction that you are going to give is every possible instruction every possible data has to be stored in the memory okay every possible instruction every possible data has to be stored in the memory plus one more thing suppose you store this instruction in the memory so this is a two byte instruction that is going to take two memory locations each memory locations can store one byte so this instruction is going to take two bytes so if the starting address for this instruction is 2000 this this uh, mvi a this this is known as opcode if we call this opcode this is opcode so this opcode is going to take one byte this data is going to take one byte opcode one byte data one byte so starting address is 2000 so this is this opcode is going to be stored at 2000 and this data is going to be stored at 2001 so what happens is this uh, we're going to take a look at this from the starting you have to start a program from 2000 now what happens is this pc pc is going to hold the value 2000 pc is program counter this does exactly what its name is this counts the program this is going to this is always going to tell you the address of the location that you have to go to keep the program running so pc holds 2000 now the value of pc is written on the address bus higher bits of this address are going to be written on the upper address bus lower bits are going to be written on lower address bus as soon as you write this address on the address bus we are going to make ale as 1 as we have made ALU as 1, this multiplies bus acts as an address bus. Now we reach the address 2000. Suppose this is the memory location 2000. When you reach here, you are going to find MVIA. MVIA is going to be written here. Now, when we have reached here, we reach here in one clock cycle. When you have reached here, ALE is going to be 0. You are going to make ALE 0. As soon as you make ALE 0, this bus is going to act as a data bus. Now, this gets overwritten with MVIA. To read this data, we are making read bar as 0. Read bar as 0. Since this is an active low pin, you have to make it 0 so that it can read the data. This data has been read, overwritten on the data bus. Now, what happens is this is going to get here. Instruction decoder. Instruction decoder gets this opcode this is known as opcode this reads the instruction decoder now what does this instruction decoder interpret that something has to be moved to a register a register is also known as accumulator so it it knows now that there is some data present in the memory location which has to be written in a which has to be written in the accumulator now this instruction decoder asks for the data where is the data what is the data so that it can write in the accumulator in the time being when all this was happening this pc got incremented this pc increased its value by one now the value of pc is 2001 now 20 is going to be written here here 01 is going to come ale is again one now we reach the next memory location. Suppose this was 2001H. Now we have reached 2001H. What was stored in 2001? 23, 23 in hexadecimal. Again ALE becomes 0, read bar becomes 0. This gets loaded with 23, 23. Now this is going to come into the bus. This bus is going to hold 23. Already this told the microprocessor that some data is going to come and you are supposed to load it in the accumulator into register A. So this 2,3 gets stored in the accumulator. Okay, what is PC going to do? This is going to get incremented. Suppose some other instruction add B, add C, something was stored. So this will be executed like this. This is how any program, any instruction is going to be executed by the microprocessor. Suppose if it was an arithmetic operation, add B, add C, add immediate data, something like that, ALU would have been involved. ALU would do the arithmetic operation. If there was a carry, this would become 1, this would become 0 accordingly. Okay, fine. Now let us look at the pin diagram. Okay, so now we are going to look at the architecture, the pin diagram of 8085 microprocessor. So uh, basically this is a 40 pin IC, 40 pin IC, dual inline package, uh, dual inline package DIB that means that it is going to have pins on both sides of the IC, okay fine and it is uh, working on NMOS technology, NMOS te technology compatible with TTL, 
compatible with TTL logic. So, uh, okay, we, j we can just have a look at the pins first. Okay, one more thing. We are using a 3 megahertz clock. 3 megahertz clock that is operating frequency of the microprocessor is 3 mega, uh, megahertz. 5 volt supply. So, these are some basics about the 8085 microprocessor. Now, just look at the pins. This A15 to A8 is higher order address bus. We already talked about address bus, right? So, these 8 pins represent the higher order address bus. This is lower order AD7 to AD0. This is lower order address come data bus. This is a multiplexed bus. This is going to act as address bus as well as data bus. This is address latch enable. Uh, we've also discussed the use of this ALE. If this ALE is 1, that uh, means this is going to be used as address bus only. If this ALE is 0, this is going to be used as data bus only. This is for input output slash memory. Using this pin, you can select whether you go, uh, want to work with input output or you want to work with the memory. Fine, these these pins S1, S0, they tell you the status. Status means when you are writing the memory, when you are reading the memory, when you are writing the input output, reading the input output. This represents these two are active low pins. They are active low and used for reading and writing. This is read bar, write bar. This is for serial data, serial data communication. Okay, this is serial input data, this is serial output data. Now this pin ready, this is used for slow peripheral. Suppose you interfaced a slow peripheral with the microprocessor. Then whenever the slow peripheral is ready, whenever it is ready to be interfaced, ready to be used, this it, this, it is going to give the signal. This is used for interfacing slow peripheral. Uh, then these are some interrupts. Trap, RST 7.5, 6.5, 5.5, INTR, that is interrupt and this is interrupt acknowledgement. These are some interrupts. Okay, we are going to learn interrupts later. Okay, these two pins, hold and hold acknowledge, they are used for direct memory access. Direct memory access DMA. Okay, we are going to learn about DMA also. Uh, what happens in DMA is if you, uh, if somebody needs to use the buses of the microprocessor, for uh, transferring data between memory and some external device, microprocessor is not involved, then we are going to use these pins hold and hold acknowledge so that buses can be allotted to the third device for use, memory can be allotted. Okay, we are using it. Uh, then this is a reset in bar, this is active low pin, this is reset out. Okay, whenever you want to reset the microprocessor, you can use this pin. This is clock out. This is a, if you are interfacing a device, some device that does not has its own clock and you want to synchronize it with the microprocessor, we can use this clock out, okay? Microprocessor will give out the clock. It will synchronize it. This VCC ground are used to give the supply of 5 volts and this is the clock. Okay, this is the clock X1, X2. This is a clock of 3 megahertz frequencies which we are using for the 8085 microprocessor. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, 8085 is a 8-bit microprocessor. It is a 8-bit microprocessor, which means that registers, the size of registers, size of registers of 8085 is going to be 8 bits. Size of ALU is going to be 8 bits. Size of ALU is going to be 8 bits. It is having 16 address lines. 16 address lines okay uh, also size of data that can be stored in any memory location is going to be 8 bit 8 bit so 8 bit uh, microprocessor is going to have registers of size 8 bit alu of size 8 bit 16 address lines this microprocessor is having and since it is having 16 address lines size of program counter we discussed about program counter 
the one which holds the address of the next instruction to be executed. Okay, the work of program counter is to hold the address of the next instruction to be executed. So, size of uh, program counter is obviously going to be 16 bits. Uh, okay, now we are going to discuss the size of memory. Memory, size of memory that can be interfaced with 8085 microprocessor. I'm going to have a look quickly. Size memory. Uh, Since size of each memory address, size of each memory address is 16 bits, right? We are having 16 address lines, therefore size of each memory address is going to be 16 bits. Therefore, total number of memory locations total number of memory locations that are present is 2 to the power 16 total 2 to the power 16 memory locations are present also also number of bits number of bits that can be stored number of bits that can be stored at each memory location at each memory location is 8 bits Okay, each data that we are going to store at any memory location is having 8 bits. So, size of memory, size of memory is going to be 2 to the power 16 memory locations are there and then you can store 8 bits in one location. So, this is going to be the total size of memory, total usable memory. Suppose, uh, okay, fine, I can write it like this, right? 2 to the power 6 is 64. This 2 to the power 10 can be written as 1 kilo and 8 bits make 1 byte. So, size of memory, size of memory of 8085 microprocessor is going to be 64 kilobytes. This is going to be the total usable size of memory.